morning everybody. Welcome to the English service of the Duke Laura Baptist Church for the 25th of July 2021. It's a crisp cool Sunday morning and as always it's a privilege for me to be with you, to learn with you and read with you from the amazing Word of God. Thanks to the eldership for also giving me the opportunity to share with you what has been pressing on my heart for the last couple of weeks. This morning we're going to look at the book of Judges, specifically the person, Gideon. And the text that I want us to, to focus on is found in Judges 7 and verse 9. And it says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says here, That same night the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go down against their camp, their camp being the Midianites. For I have given it unto your hand. But if you fear to go down, but if you fear to go down, go with Pira, your servant, to the camp. And you shall hear what they say, and afterwards your hands shall be strengthened to go down against them. You know, the book of Judges is, at least to me, it's, it's a clear cycle of the Israelites doing what is good in the sight of the Lord. And then falling into apostasy or some other bad way of thinking or doing things, the Lord sends a judge which puts them on the right path. Everything goes good. And this cycle continues. And to me it's a it's a beautiful story of of grace. How the Lord still has grace for for the Israelites and he doesn't necessarily say that, you know, I'm done with, with them. You know, he doesn't say that he's done with us, you know. I've tried enough. Let's just get somebody else. No, it doesn't work like that. So it's a beautiful story of grace. And, you know, the judges is not the thinking that we have in the Western world where it's a, a courtroom packed with witnesses and we have a judge presiding over the case. No, these are more like a tribal leader um, that is there to point the Israelites in the, rec in the right direction. So in, in, we pick it up in Judges 6, where Gideon, and interesting, Gideon is mentioned in the New Testament as one of the heroes of the faith. But when we see and when we meet him here in Judges 6, it doesn't necessarily say that to us. He doesn't come out to me or, or is expressed to me as a person of, of a lot of faith. But we see where, we pick it up in 6, where Gideon is found threshing wheat in a wine press. And the reason why he's threshing it in a wine press, because usually we thresh it, you know, take it off of the, the wheat or the valuable part of the, off of the wheat, and the wind would blow and it would blow all the chaff and the remainder that you don't want away, is they were scared of the Midianites. Now the Midianites is a is quite a big number of people that would come in where the Israelites would plant crops and stay and they would raid everything. For seven years they would come in and just take everything they wanted. And they were afraid of these Midianites. Now the Midianites were also considered a uneducated nation. It wasn't like the Roman Empire or a very advanced people. And I think that's that's what all also made it so so oppressive to the Israelites as they were being under Oppressed or oppressed by a nation that they already put under their feet in historical records. That's the first part. But anyway, we pick it up where, where Gideon says, And the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon. And he says to him, Man of valor, mighty man of valor, the Lord will go with you, he's with you. You will be the one that saves the Israelites from the Midianites. You know, the hero of the faith. Threshing wheat in a wine press because he's scared of the Midianites being detected by the Midianites. And and Gideon goes and he says, Sir, addresses this angel of the Lord. Sir, how is it possible that we've heard all these stories from our forefathers where the Lord has saved the Israelites, taken them out of the hands of the Egyptians, brought them out, We've heard all these wonderful stories of Moses. But where is the Lord now? Where is the Lord now? 
We're being oppressed by the Midianites. Where's the Lord now? Isn't that the way that I also find myself asking, but where's the Lord in this situation? Where's the Lord now? Where's the Lord? Why is the Lord not acting? And it wasn't necessarily, in their case, he wasn't necessarily acting maybe because they weren't doing things correctly. But sometimes, sometimes we ask, but where is the Lord in this situation? Where is the Lord in this situation? You know, it goes on and it says, he says to the angel of the Lord, please just wait, I'm just going to get an offering. Goes, gets some bread and meat, puts it on a, on, on a rock. An angel of the Lord touches the rock. And fire comes out of the rock, consuming the offer. And, and Gideon perceives that he's, you know, he spoke to an angel of the Lord. Now some say this was actually the Lord himself shown to Jesus, not an angel of the Lord. Sorry, shown to Gideon, not an angel of the Lord, but the Lord himself. Be that as it may, that's the first miracle that that Gideon sees. The Lord then says to him, after this, Gideon, go to your father's house, go to the city, and destroy the idol of Baal and Asheroth that's been erected there. And Gideon is, is afraid. But this is the first part. When the Lord asks him to do it, he does do it. You know, there's obedience from Gideon's side. He takes ten servants and he goes at night because he knows that the people of the city might not be happy that he's going to destroy the idol and it just shows you how how low this israelites also um, went in terms of you know they, they are erecting these idols in the city and houses and he goes at night and he and he destroys this this idol of baal and the next day the people of the city asks but and when they see it's destroyed they ask who did it and they find out that it's gideon the son of joash and they tell his father joash bring gideon out so that we can kill him and Joash, in, in some, of, some of the wisdom that he has, he says that to protect his son, I would, I would say, if Gideon is a, if Baal is a god, then let him contend for himself, let him fight his own battles. And from that day on, Gideon is known as Jerubal, meaning the one who contends with Baal. And this is where we starting to focus on the the part of scripture that we've been discussing this morning. Because it says there, the, the Lord's Spirit came upon Gideon. He was ready to go and take on these Midianites that were camping in the valley. Approximations say there was about 145,000 of these Midianites, that the camels were as many as a carpet laying out over the, over the valley. You could not see the end. But the Spirit of the Lord came onto Gideon and he says, you know, get ready to fight, we're going down to get the Midianites. And, and Gideon calls all these men together from the, from, the, from, the, from the tribes to come with him and fight. And more than 30,000 show up. But the Lord says to him, and this is the first part, the Lord says to him, the men are too many. Because if we go down, and remember the Lord already promised him that he gave him the power to defeat the Midianites. So if the Lord says, if we go down with these many men and you fight and you win, you're going to say it's because of your own strength. It's because of your strategy and tactics that you won this battle. And the Lord fights our battles for us. The Lord fights it in such a way. And if we are truly honest with ourselves, there are times that we can clearly see this that finger of God in our lives touching that situation where we can't say that it's because of our thinking, our doing, because we are smart, intelligent, making the right decisions. The Lord says to him, no, reduce the men even more. The glory is mine. They can see the, the Midianites and they say, everybody that's afraid, go back to your house. And a lot of the men leave. But still a couple of thousand are left. I think 10,000 or so leaves. And the, the remainder is still a lot. And the Lord says, no, it's, it's still too many. Go down to the brook, and every man that laps like a dog, you put him to one side. That's the way how they distinguish between the men that's going to go to battle and not. And I'm not sure why the ones that laps like a dog are distinguished from the others. But at the end of the day, 
only 300 remain. 300 against an army of 145,000. The odds are not great. Maybe 3 to 400 to 1. That's not great odds. But you see, the Lord has already fought the battle for him. He's going to get the glory and he doesn't want any of, of those men or, or Gideon to get the glory from the, for the battle that he, he's already given or the battle that he's already won. The Lord is fighting our battles for us. The Lord is fighting our battles for us. And here's where it's get, it gets interesting. I'm not advocating for signs here. Not at all, because a friend of mine said, remember the Bible says that, you know, we should not test God with signs. But he says, Gideon says to the Lord, Lord, please give me a sign. If I put out this fleece of wool, and if it's wet and all around it dry, then I know it's you that have given me the sign to go ahead and take on the Midianites. It happens the same day. And this, the, the next day, Gideon gets to the fleece of wool. He presses it out into a bowl of, into a bowl, you know, the water into a bowl. And all around it, it's dry. And he says, Lord, do not let your an anger be kindled against me. And remember, this is the year of the faith. Do not let your anger be kindled against me. But please, show me another sign. This time, if I put out the fleece of wool, let that be dry and all around it be wet. And the next morning... <laughs> Gideon came out and he found it exactly like that. And, you know, here's a, here's a part that in, in, in verse 7, and, and the Lord said, that same night, in verse 9, Arise and go down against their camp, for I have given it into your hand. The Lord has given them into your hand. But look what the Lord says to Gideon. <laughs> But if you fear, I have given you this, this situation. I have already brought an end to it. I've already fought the battle for you. But look at the grace that the Lord has for him. And look at the grace that the Lord has for us. Is go down now. I've given you the battle. It's already been won. But if you fear, but if you fear, take your servant and go and listen to what they say. Because then you'll be strengthened. It's, it's just the absolute perfect example of the grace that the Lord gives us. He didn't say, oh no, this guy, I've shown him so many signs. Let's just get somebody else. I mean, Gideon is not our, it's not a, it's not a guy. Let's just get somebody else. The Lord doesn't work like that with us. He's gracious with us. He's gracious and compassionate. The Bible says, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is gracious towards you. The situations that we're all facing, the Lord has grace. He's giving us grace. He's given us grace. And the the person that explains this so so perfectly in, in, in such a story form for me is, is Spurgeon where he says, imagine that Gideon takes his servant in the dead of night and they're crawling their way down to the Midianite camp. Sure, the detection would result in certain death. If they are found out, they will be killed right there on the spot. But what are the chances of them crawling down to the bottom of the, of the camp, maybe down the mountain, getting to, and the exact point that they get to at the camp is the exact point where two of the Midianite men are sitting around a campfire having a discussion. What is the exact, what is the, the chances of that happening? You see, the Lord works miraculously in our situations as well. This person says, you can see Gideon lying there on his back and listening to, to these men talking. But what are, what are the chances that he would get to that specific point? place in that camp where those two men are sitting it's the Lord's it's the Lord fighting the battle for us and he's fighting these battles for us without us even knowing it the Lord fights your battle for you and I want to encourage you with that this morning 
So he's lying there on his back and he hears these two Midianite men. And the one says to the other, I had the dream of a barley bread, a loaf of barley bread, which is a, it's almost like a very cheap bread, rolling down the mountain and hitting the tent of the Midianites and it falls flat. And miraculously, miraculously, the, the companion of this man lays out the meaning of this dream to his friend. And he says, surely this is the sword of Gideon, the son of Joas, which the Lord has given into his hand, the camp of the Midianites. And you can see the way they, you know, Spurgeon explains it. You can see that Gideon is lying there flat on his back and he's listening to this. And when he hears those words, he's strengthened from within his bones. He just gets this discomfort. The, the, you know, the Lord just brings this peace upon him and, he, and it strengthens him. It strengthens him. And he just praises the Lord while he's laying there with his servant in the pitch black night. And he praises the Lord for bringing him the strength for just showing him again. And the grace that God has to show him now the third or the fourth time. To strengthen him. The Lord is strengthening us. Through things that are so small as this. As a dream that you hear or a, a, a certain word that somebody speaks. He's gracious enough to make the most minuscule things the most important in the lives of his children. He's gracious to us. He brings encouragement. He brings encouragement. And I can just see Gideon... You know, crawling his way back with this fervent fear of of the Lord and a fervent love and appreciation and just being consumed by this grace. Going back and thanking the Lord as he as he's scrolling back through the night. You see, the Lord fights our battles for us. He gives us grace. Again, I'm not advocating for science, but the Lord gives us grace. Sometimes He gives us that perfect, unexplainable inclination that we just know that this is the hand of God and He's fighting this battle for us. And I want to encourage you with that this morning. The Lord is fighting our battles. He's fighting your battles. Whatever that Midianite camp is that seems so big in your life, whatever it is, Finance, sickness. The Lord wants to strengthen you this morning and tell you that incline, hear, listen, listen to what they're saying. The enemy is scared of you. Be strengthened. Because the Lord is fighting your battle for you this morning. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this wonderful, wonderful message in the book of Judges. Showing us Gideon, hero of the faith, also had doubts. Asking for multiple signs, but we know that you are fighting these battles for us, Father. We know that you are the one that's going to bring encouragement. We must just listen, Father. We must just listen to you. That minuscule dreams, that little word that you speak through somebody else is a way to strengthen us. It's a way to encourage us, to show us that you're still there. You haven't forgotten us. You haven't forgotten us, Jesus. Your grace is there through the ups and downs, like it is with the Israelites. Thank you this Thank you, Lord, for giving us this message this morning, this message of encouragement. We praise your holy name. Thank you. Amen. I hope that this message encourages you, and I pray that you have a wonderful week. Until we meet again, goodbye.